We're gonna come up into our 90-90 position with our right leg forward. So have your blocks handy. For me, I have relatively short arms relative to my torso length, so I have quite a long torso, especially for a short individual, which means my legs are quite short as well. So because my extremities are so short and I have this long torso, it's helpful for me to have some yoga blocks handy. It also becomes really helpful if your external rotation is really limited because you might have to lean off to the side a little bit. Staying upright might be very difficult for you. So in either of those cases, you can use your blocks as extended arms or just as a extended arm to bring you off to the side slightly. Now we're gonna come into our 90-90 position. So our front leg, we're gonna have 90 degrees of knee bend. Our back leg, we're also gonna have 90 degrees of knee bend. Now with that back leg, try for this class, because we're trying to get you a little bit more comfortable than 90 degrees or in 90-90, try to make sure your knee isn't too far in front. Try to actually have it straight out to the side of your hip and same thing with your back leg around 90 degrees. Now if you have any knee problems going on in that back leg, feel free to bend that back knee and offload it a little bit. See if you can keep your femur there just so that at least from like the femur, pelvis, hip complex, we're still in a 90 degree position while you offload that back knee. So I care less about what the knee is doing on the back, more about what the hip is doing so that we are in 90-90 for this class today. So once you've got that, I'm actually gonna encourage you for this first one, because we're gonna tinker with different angles here. Instead of having your front knee directly in front of your hip, you can actually bring it out to the side a little bit more. Now bear in mind, like we just talked about, if your hip external rotation is really limited, your knee might not be on the ground right now, your knee might be elevated. At which point you can take your wedge and bring it underneath of your leg to try and get as much of the outside of your shin in contact with that wedge as you can versus being here where it's like your ankle is in contact but then nothing above that is because your hip is too limited. Just bring that wedge in there and then that'll reduce your need to lean off to the side to get that leg in contact. It'll give you the ability to be a little bit more upright. And if you don't have a wedge, just take a cushion, a pillow, anything that you can place under your knee. Yeah, you'll have two contact points instead of that nice long area um, or surface area in contact with the ground with the wedge, but it's better than nothing and it'll still somewhat replicate the wedge. Now we're, we're gonna put you in that position. We're gonna try and find a stretch there. So knee is actually slightly outside the hip if you can be there without pinching. And then we're just gonna explore this position a little bit and try and find your best stretch. We're gonna spend a decent amount of time in a passive stretch because for a lot of people, their passive hip external rotation is a limiting factor to their ability to be in this position. So if you take your pelvis, if this is my pelvis right now, I can try and dump it forward slightly. So if you imagine your pelvis as a bucket of water, which is a common example, you're gonna try and pour that bucket of water forward, which you're gonna notice is gonna make you a little bit taller. Whereas when you dump it backwards, you're gonna get shorter and you're gonna become flex. So we're actually gonna encourage some extension, get really long through your spine. For a lot of people, that in and of itself gives them a big stretch in the front hip. The other thing that you can do is take your belly button and your pubic bone and turn it over towards that front side knee then you might notice an even bigger stretch there. And you're just kind of searching for, okay, where does it feel like I'm getting my best stretch? You don't need to round yourself right over top of that leg. If anything, I actually want you to maintain length through your spine rather than getting super flexy and stoopy. And you're just gonna search for that stretch and we're just gonna hang out. We're gonna bank a little bit of time here. So once you've found that, hang out, breathe, slow inhales through the nose, even slower exhales. You can either exhale through your nose or through your mouth. I don't really care, but I do need your breathing slow. We need your nervous system to be okay with this position. If you start getting really anxious and really stressed while you're here and your breathing reflects that or even pushes you into that further, again, we're less likely to see a lasting change here. So we're gonna hang out in this position, bank a little bit of time, then we're gonna do a round of pails and rails here and I'll talk you through what's that, or what that's gonna look like while you're spending your time stretching. When you do your pails effort, you're going to be trying to rotate your shin into the ground. So if you think about that um, cue that we used earlier in the capsule cars where I said imagine that you have a rod going through your kneecap into your hip, 
you're gonna use the same cue. So I want your kneecap to stay right where it is and you imagine that that rod is still going through there and you're gonna be driving down through your foot, through the full surface of your outer shin to try to rotate on that rod. But we don't want your knee coming up in the process. So we want that kneecap to stay right where it is as you drive down, really emphasizing the rotate. Because if you just think press down, you're gonna, be, you're gonna end up doing a hip extension movement where you drive your whole leg down. Nothing wrong with that, but that's targeting different tissues. We want the rotational element of it because this is a hip external rotation class, right? So when I do it, my kneecap's gonna stay put. I'm not thinking about pressing through my knee. I'm thinking about emphasizing the pressing on the lower end and really trying to focus on the rotation. The same is true for your rails contraction. So when you reverse, for almost everyone with limited hip external rotation, the first thing that wants to happen when they reverse is their knee wants to come up and they wanna use their flexor tissue to cheat and try and get that foot off the ground because your body's just gonna try and use whatever it can use to make that foot come off the ground if you're thinking, lift my foot. And so I need you to really be thinking, rotate my hip more than lift my foot and try to keep that kneecap put. And then your body's gonna be less likely to use all that flexion-based stuff and more likely to use the rotation-based stuff. So bear those things in mind when we do our pails and rails. Now we're gonna get started on those pails and rails now. If you feel like you need a little bit more time here, please feel free to hit pause and bank that extra time in this position. And then you can come back and hit resume on the video whenever you're ready. So big breath in, you're gonna solidify your body. Make sure nothing moves at all when we're doing this. This is a, an isometric effort, so there shouldn't be movement at all. You're gonna give me 20% effort, trying to rotate out of the stretch. Kneecap stays put. Increase to 40%, 60%, trying to rotate out of this position, 80%, and then your greatest, safest, pain-free effort, trying to rotate out of the position, rod going through the kneecap, the rod does not move, you're just thinking spin, you're holding for another eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Two, do not let that kneecap move, reverse. Now you're thinking rotate the other way as if trying to lift the foot, but via rotation. So don't let that kneecap lift at all. You're trying to access those rotators. You're visualizing your thigh spinning outwards, which will make your foot get lighter, but it's probably not gonna lift because you're in a true passive stretch right now. You're gonna keep holding that, keep holding that, keep holding that, do not let up. Keep going for another five, four, three, two, one. Don't leave the position, don't change position, but slowly relax, slow your breathing back down, come back to nasal breathing, and then we're gonna adjust our angle slightly. 